I'm going to be doing a lot of things differently with this video than I've done before. So after setting up this egg crate, enjoy this particularly long video as I explain all the wonderful mistakes I made. The first mistake that will become apparent later is that I should have quartered the body when I skinned it to break it up into more manageable chunks. I was too lazy to wait for it to thaw when I pulled it out of the freezer, so I just threw it in there hoping for the best. The fact is, this was way too much meat for my beetles to take on at one time. The first thing you'll notice is that as the body thawed, it actually dripped some water down onto the egg crate. This meat was way too wet, and this ended up going sour and reeking as the days went on. The reason I'm leaving this video in a long form instead of speeding it up is because later I'll be making a longer series on this fox from beginning to end. In that video, these time lapses will be greatly shortened. You've probably noticed by now that this body is missing a head. That was actually done in a separate video that you can see here by following this link. I do feel the need to add this little disclaimer. This fox was found on the side of the highway already dead. I decided I wanted to preserve and immortalize this beautiful animal in the best way I know how. I did not kill this fox for the purpose of getting a skeleton or making a video. Nor did I just kill that bearded dragon in my previous video just for a gag. I can't believe I have to explain this, but there are a lot of upset people on the internet that dislike my videos and try and rile people up. All the animals I feature on these videos have been ethically sourced. This means that I didn't just kill the animal for sport and want a trophy. Ethically sourced bones means that the animal is either found dead already, as in the case of this fox, are a beloved deceased pet, as in the case of the bearded dragon, or they are a byproduct of another industry, such as trapping or exterminating pests, things like that. When you see me do a bobcat, possum, or raccoon skull, yes, they were trapped by hunters, but after they are done with it, there are still some wasteful bits, like the head. I'm taking something that someone has already killed and doing my very best to make sure every part of that animal is used and does not go to waste. I'm not trying to make it sound like this is a vegan process or anything, but I just want to point out that I am not killing animals just for my craft.
At this point, I was afraid that the feet were going to finish early, so I spread the legs apart so all the little toe bones and claws wouldn't get jumbled together and mixed up. This also exposed some more meaty bits. I was a little concerned at this point. For some reason, there was a big lull between day two and three where not a lot of progress was being made. The smell was starting to get really unbearable in my garage, so I was afraid I'd have to pull it out and postpone the rest of the video until I could get the smell under control. This could have been caused by several things. Uh, maybe I had a large generation of beetles that all ate their fill and then took a break to molt or pupate at the same time. Maybe the meat was just putrefied enough to become um, unappetizing for a second. Either way, swift progress was made after about the third day. I shouldn't have made my little sign double-sided. It keeps flipping over and switching between two days and three days. Just another part of the learning process. If you watch other Dermested Beetle time lapses, or if you're familiar with the beetle process, you may notice that I do things a little differently than most. For one, I leave as much flesh on as I can. While I mentioned earlier I'm actually regretting it this time, in general I do not deflesh specimens before I put them in. I just think that it's really boring to watch a video where the skull or body has been so defleshed that it basically just looks like you're going from red bones to white bones. I prefer being able to see the process, see the chunks of muscles and fat slowly disappear, revealing all the different layers, to see the powerful jaw muscles around the skull, or how much meat it takes to move those little femur bones. While yes, the trade-off is that the process takes longer and is ultimately stinkier, I think that's what sets my videos apart from the rest. By the fourth day, the majority of the meat is gone, 
but the egg crate that soaked up all the juices from earlier still remains stinky. You can also see by that bottom foot there why it is generally very important to skin specimens before putting them in your beetles. They do not eat scales or fur, so it just gets moved around a lot and makes a general mess. You'll see me clean it up a few times before this is done. At the five day mark, I added the last bit of tail that had fallen off. The tail was found this way, so I believe it was an injury sustained when it was hit by a car on the highway. The fluffy bit I added beneath the rib cage is the baculum. If you don't know what a baculum is, definitely go read up about it on Wikipedia. That's B A C U L U M. Go ahead. Go look it up. We'll wait. At this point, my wife really wanted to do some work in the garage, so I rearranged the bones so I could take away the stink-soaked egg crate. Then let everything finish up. You can clearly see the baculum now that I've cleared the fur away to the right of the six days sign. I also added an egg to one side just because there isn't enough meat surface area anymore to satisfy all the larvae. If there's not enough food available, 
These insects are quick to cannibalize on younger larvae and eggs. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this perfect fox that had been killed in traffic. Normally in such cases you see massive damage to the skull, especially for such a quick death. But it was perfect. In fact, it wasn't until I got very far into the beetling process that I found out where the fox had been hit and damaged. Did you catch that? I'll show you the damage in detail in the final video, so stay tuned. This is actually about the 7 day mark. I slow down the time lapse rate as I pick out the majority of the bones. I'm going to give the skeleton a good soaking to rehydrate any tissues that may be left, and then reintroduce them to be picked clean. At this point I leave the limbs behind because they still have some skin and fur left. I'll soak those after I bring the rest back. Now I'm taking out the limbs to soak and reintroducing the rest of the skeleton, including the skull, to finish off any remaining tissue. The skeleton is completely done now, so I'll swap it out with the limbs that have been soaking. I'll keep them in separate bins so the toe bones and claws don't get lost or mixed up. I speed this part up another four times because it gets a little slow. Uh, the paper towel in the middle is just so the beetles can get in and out of the little plastic bins because they cannot climb that slippery plastic. So that's it for now. This is what the bones currently look like. The next step is to submerge them in my degreasing solutions for a few weeks. Then I'll whiten them. Subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for an update on the final product.